Hey everyone, long time no see. Farmer manicure. <laughs> It's Brittany here, Green Bee Floral in Strathroy, Ontario, Canada, and I know that it has been a very long time uh, since I've been on here. For starters, hi, still alive. Um, the summer went by like crazy, and honestly, it was just a huge whirlwind of trying to time manage our weddings, the farm, um, the new shop, and it just, time just got away from us. But I'm back now, um, hilariously alternating from last year where I was very good at vlogging the entire summer and uh, then completely forgot about the winter months. So nobody fall over in your chair. We are still here. We're still flowering. There's lots going on. And for those of you who follow our Instagram account, you already know some of the fun stuff we've been doing this summer. It is November the... I think it's the 6th or the 7th. I don't know. Again, days just kind of roll together. It's the 6th. And a couple weeks ago, we got our tulips in. So there's a lot of tulips and a lot of crates here. So I wanted to kind of show you today what we are doing for our tulips because it's a little different than we've done in the years past. We have a few different successions of tulips that we are working on this year. The first succession, so with last year's tulips, the round of tulips that came in and bloomed for the spring of 2023, we um, held back some of those bulbs and kept them in the cooler to cold stratify them. We haven't done that before and I'm just, it was a trial, saved a couple varieties back that um, I knew I wanted to try, just singles because that's nice and easy. Um, and so then those stayed in the farm cooler uh, for the summer. Now we have already got those planted into crates and our goal is going to be actually to pull those out in oh, probably a, like the first week of January uh, with the intention of having tulips blooming for Valentine's Day. Uh, we're going to see how this goes. We're in zone 6 a 6b kind of like on the cusp of the two we just recently had the clocks turn back uh so we you know gained our extra hour of sleep but now it's dark an hour earlier so as we kind of start to figure out how much sunlight you know we can get away with whether we need to have additional grow lights in our greenhouses to help them grow basically this is a new thing that we're trying for going into 2024 because i thought it would be really cool to have local tulips for valentine's day this year uh the second thing what i got to do today is sort through the pile of bulbs that i have here and pull out the ones that we are actually going to be creating for our march and our april successions so the process of doing that is actually quite simple. What we've already done is we have crates that, um, like just our black crates, right? These filled up with dirt in the small greenhouse in our backyard. And we are just going to be placing a hundred bulbs in each. Be labeling the outside with flagging tape. I like to use bright pink. I actually find this to be uh, one of the ones that keeps the color on. I know there's a big, you know, um, flower farmers, depending on how big you are and what you're doing, there's like a lot of mixed feelings about flagging tape because it's plastic, but it's nice and bright and I can always see what I'm growing. So I like this, works fine. And it attaches nicely between the holes on the crates here, right? So it's very visible right away and you know exactly what variety you're looking at. So it's going to take me a while to get through this. I think I counted out we are doing 21 crates of early variety of tulip this year, which is the most that we've ever done. It's been really fun year after year to see how the I don't know, requests, the, the market for our flowers continues to grow and we get to kind of innovate and do new things. And I think a lot of what happened this summer is my brain just couldn't compartmentalize all of the different things that were going on. And at the end of the day, I was so tired. It was such a long, hot hard summer this past year which I'm gonna kind of I think I'll recap that in another video because there's a lot to talk about there 
But for now, we're going to get started on tulips because it's been so long and uh, I'm really excited. So here we go. Let's get going. Let's get going. that I have these ones were what our ranunculus were planted in in the spring. Uh, we've gotten most of the nunks out, although I think there's still a few, there's still a few in there. Um, so as I kind of move the dirt around, I'm going to be digging up any of the extra corms, setting those aside, and then those are going to be going across the way into the small hoop house here in the yard. You can also see it's more of our wind eucalyptuses getting ready to be overwintered again, but I have about six tulips uh, that we are going to be starting with. So we're gonna get these here, starting to plant into these crates. Uh, we're gonna take them then outside and they're gonna hang out for the winter, um, just like along the fence line there, get covered with, with snow. And then in February for those ones, we'll start bringing them into the hoop house here like we did in the spring and we should have tulips blooming again in March, which is awesome. Okay, so here we go. She gonna get planted. It's a good thing I got seed trays everywhere. There's one behind me. I need bucket. One of the reasons why uh, we leave our crates on the ground is it actually really helps encourage life. It's also very windy here today. It helps encourage life. So we get things like worms uh, in our soils as opposed, because they'll come up through the bottom and kind of create and work on the ecosystem in the crates. And that's awesome to see. It helps to create healthier dirt. Otherwise, you run the risk of, you know, just having dead dirt year after year, and that's not a good thing. I'm gonna raise you up a little. I think that's a little better. Then we can actually like talk to each other. Um, so yeah. So as I was saying, it's helpful to have the crates on the ground. I don't think we put any cardboard or anything in the bottom of these ones. It doesn't look like it. The nunks just went straight in. Here's another baby. Um, and so it's already really good soil, um, which is awesome for the tulips. They're gonna hibernate to create good root systems. And they're ready to go in the spring. Anyways, here's another guy. I'll leave him back in there. So basically what I've done, um, I filled the crate to kind of the first uh, level here. There's two ridges, right? I filled it to about there. We're gonna lay the tulips in, move them outside, and then my husband is going to shovel dirt on top of these once they are in their spots for the winter. Tulip planting is very, very easy. Put them in the dump. Take the flag. Like to the outside. And we're just gonna go ahead and lay the tulips in. Just like that. So, with tulips, 
you want to make sure two things. One, that you're planting uh, flat side down, right? Pointy side up, it's where the tulip grows. And two, you wanna make sure that they are in egg cartons width apart. So they have to have a little bit of space between them. The reason we plant tulips this way, obviously, is so that if you do have one that develops mold or disease throughout the season, uh, it's not going to immediately uh, infect the rest of your crop. Uh, so it's important to leave that little space between your tulips. Don't plant them so that they're completely touching. We do them about eight in a row here in the crates, kind of what I can fit comfortably depending on the bulb. And uh, then we'll do 12 rows. So it'll be eight by 12. lunch and we're back out now um <laughs> I'm starting to get sore I think I'm in my like 10th crate of tulip now which means we've got about a thousand planted already to go for the spring uh, which is really exciting I mean it's very cool to be in a position where I can start to plan um and also knowing that I am going to be setting bulbs aside um for next year as well already so like not 2024 but um, for early in 2025. Um, I have those kind of labeled and separated out. Um, picked some beautiful red tulips just specifically for that reason. It's all the hard stuff now, right? Picking during the summer is not as like, I think like labor intensive in the way that like your muscles hurt. Um, this kind of stuff is much more like, you really gotta pace yourself or you get sore quick. 
Anyways, I've got about three varieties left that I'm going to do today and then another 10 that need to be done yet this week, which will probably be Wednesday's job. So tomorrow I need to be at the shop. Um, yeah. So we had some ranunculus that got missed here. Uh, so we're going to be pulling these out and planting them into the hoop house uh, within the next like two weeks. I don't know if we'll get blooms on these for Christmas, but we will see. They're like, they're like everywhere. <laughs> now, for those of you who it might be your first time here, thank you and you made it to the end of the video. Thank you for watching the video. For those of you who are longtime subscribers, thank you for your patience. Um, if you're, of course, wanting to subscribe, hit the button. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button. And uh, if you have any questions about our tulip planting, obviously we haven't gotten to like the main dig of the field yet. I'll do that in another video, which is, you know, you got your rows and rows of tulips like they do in Holland. They are going into a slightly different part of the farm this year. We kind of rotate crops um, throughout the year. Again, farmer speak. Uh, but if you do have any questions about just general crate planting, pop them below. I don't know if I missed anything. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done a video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and we will see you next time. Bye guys.